It said, this is, uh, Joseph dreams a dream. And it said, and, and he said unto them, hear ye, I pray you, this dream which I have what? Dream. 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 Have you told the people that, you told the people your dream and they start hating afterwards? And then in verse 7 it says this, For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose, and also stood up right. And behold, your sheaves stood round about and made open sense to me. Uh, now, as we deal with that, I want to just share something with you all, that, you know, Joseph, is, they just in the field working. Amen. They, they're in the field working. But all of a sudden, God gives him a dream, and uh, it said his sheaf rose up. Cause they, and God normally speaks to you based on where you're at. And it said, and, and, uh, and, he, and, he, and he said that my sheaf rose up above y'all's, and y'all was, y'all was under me, following me. His brother hated him that for that. Because all of a sudden, you, y'all in the same field, are you following me? And all of a sudden, your, your sheep rise up over theirs. And I found out some people are all right as long as your sheep don't rise up above theirs. <laughs> you follow me? But when, and so there's a place you're going to get in your life when you be that sheep start rising above theirs. Until you start wanting to make a million dollars when they're looking for a dollar raise. You stop leaving for an airplane, they believe in for a truck. Because all of a sudden, you got to take it to another, another level. So I'm going to ask you that question again. How big is your dream? Is that right? And so then look at verse 8, it says this. This is in Genesis 37, verse 8, it says, And his brother said unto him, Thou shalt indeed, shalt thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have or dominion over us? And they hated him more for his dreams. Folks, they don't, they don't really hate you for your car or your house. They hate you for your dream. And then he dreams in verse 9, it says, and he dreamed another dream and told his brothers. Remember, you can't tell everybody everything. How do you know that? And told his brothers and said, behold, I dream a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the 11 stars made over to me. He's talking about his, his mama and his daddy and all his brothers and sisters. So Joseph is about 16 years old, and God's giving him this what? This dream. Amen. About, about, you know, and see, he, what this dream meant is that one, he's going to be the prime minister of Egypt. He's he going to be sold by his brothers and put into a grave uh, uh, to die. He's going he to be lied on by, by Potiphar's wife. He's going to be put in jail for 16 years, but he don't let go of his dream. Because the dream, God gave that dream before all this happened. Yes. So sometimes we want to let go of the dream because we don't, we don't know about the pit. We don't, we, don't, we don't know about the haters and folks that try to kill our dream. But Joseph kept his dream when he was in the pit. He kept his dream when he was in prison. He kept his dream when he was being lied on. Are y'all following me? He never let go of the dream that God gave him. And as you read through the scriptures, it, it, she, it showed that it came to pass. He became the, it just, but he interpreted one gene of Pharaoh, and in one day, he went from the pit, the prison, to the palace. Amen. So God can turn things around in one day. Yes. Matter of fact, it was in, in the same hour. Yes. Somebody say amen. amen. So, so, so I'm going to talk to you about that because, you know, God has given us an assignment. Now, let me use the word dream. God's given me a dream for, for 50 churches here in, in, in Arizona. Yes. Are you following me? Well, you know, you tell some folks that, they say, ah, what are you talking about, city churches? Right, 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 right. You know, and then I, I seen one found on, on Facebook, and he said, who ever heard of a one-hour church? Well, well God didn't give you the dream. Right. <laughs> folks that hate you for your dream. Yes, Somebody say amen. amen. So, so, so the whole point is, how big is your dream? Because whatever God's put in your heart, that's really what's possible for you. Somebody say amen, amen. in those areas. Yes. So now, I, I want to talk to you for a moment. Because, you know, God talks about in the last days, I'm going to pour my spirit upon all flesh. Yes. He said, your son's going to dream dream, young men going to dream dream, old men going to dream dream, young men going to dream, 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 see visions. Yes. And, and, and so dreams and visions is how God speaks to you concerning your purpose. Yes. God don't speak to you concerning your bank account. God don't speak to you based on your education. God speaks to you based upon his purpose. God speaks to you based upon his ability working in you to make it happen. 
Joseph, a young boy, 16 years old, he was not the oldest boy, so he, he, he did not fit in the lineage to be the next one in line. Are you following me? But, and David didn't fit in the lineage to be the next one in line. He was only 16 years old. But I'm saying, but, but if God gives you the dream that he means for you not to, to begin to conceive, now, now I'm going to talk about today about conceiving that dream. Because it's one thing to be given the dream. It's another thing to take the time to conceive that dream that God's given to you. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, so look at this. I, I, I'm going to talk to you now about Abraham, a man that God gave a dream at the age of 99 years old. You're going to have a baby. So you got God, who is Alpha and Omega, who sees your ending. You got Abraham, who is 99 years old. His body's dead. You got Sarah, who's 90. Her body dead. And God, God interrupts their life and says, y'all are going to have a baby. So uh, the scripture talks about when God first said that, Abraham said he fell on his face and laughing. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm sure he did. You know, have you seen Sarah? Have you looked at my body lately? Uh, you follow me. And what God is saying here is that, is that when I give you a dream, I'm not looking at your natural ability to make it happen. I'm looking at if you can conceive it, if you can believe it, you can have it. But it's one thing, how, how many mothers, no mothers, uh, conceiving the dream is something else, huh? And, and sometimes I wish that I could, that I could you know, it, it, it's kind of like having children. I wish you could, you know, mothers, y'all probably know this, you wish you could just, you know, use, use the pain you went through on the last kid for this new one. But God says, no, every child requires a new process. Every child requires a new dream. Jerry, you know, you're, 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 you're six salons. Those, those are your babies. Wouldn't it be good if you could just use the pain you went through there on this next baby? <laughs> are you following me? But, but so, uh, y'all talking, see, so God may give you all some dreams, but see, you know, God says, no, you can't use your, 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 your last pain. You can't use your last birth. Now, you can use the experience of it. You, 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 know, the, you know the process a lot better now, but you cannot escape the birthing process. You cannot escape the, 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 the conception process. You cannot escape the, the first trimester, the second trimester. Third. Yeah, you got to go through all that thing again because this is a fresh dream that your eyes have not seen. Now, I, I hope you all understand what I'm saying. So Abraham now, is he's already tried to do it in the fifth because that's how he came up with Ishmael. So sometimes we try, to, we try to do our dreams based upon, you know, you know, uh, I, you know well, Sarah told him, said, you know, I, I can't have no babies. You know, God gave us that promise, so why don't you go into my, 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 uh, my maid? And maybe you, you can get the dream through her because, you know, God did promise us a child. So then they're trying to manifest the thing through the flesh, and it came up with Ishmael. And then Sarah said, after the baby came up there, Sarah got mad and said, get that boy and this woman out here. And Sarah the one caused it. But sometimes we try to do things in the flesh. And, and, and not understand that this is a dream that we got we to conceive it. Then we got to carry it through each trimester. And then we give birth to it. So I, so I, I don't know about you, but I kind of wish that when God told me this about these 50 churches, I wish God would use the last, the last 40 years and say, God, okay, you had enough experience. I ain't going to let you go through that. No, he says a new baby. And, and that's why sometimes we miss it. And in, 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 in the, in, in this the new dream that God has for us. Abraham is 100 years old, so we can't, just, we can't use our age. Sarah's 90 years old, so we can't use the, you know, the, you know, the wife or the husband. Are you following me? Somebody say amen. So, so let me show you for a moment. Let's, let's go to this point. How then did God get Abraham to conceive this dream, which was nearly naturally impossible? How did he get to do that? So let's look here. In Genesis chapter 17 and verse number 4, God comes to Abraham and he makes this statement. Uh, Genesis 17 verse 4 says, And as for me, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. God's given him a fresh new dream. Is that right? And then he says, verse number 5, he says, Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be called Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. So God is coming to Abraham 
not in what he sees going to be done one day. God comes to him in the past tense. I'm going to say it again. God comes to him not in what's going to happen one day. God comes to him in the past tense. Are y'all following me? So uh, I'll, I'll read that again because it's important because y'all need y'all to see this in those areas. Verse, Genesis 17, verse 4, he said, ask for me my covenant. And when God talks about covenant, he, 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 he's, he's getting some strong words. You, and you shall be the father of many nations. That's the dream, ain't it? Yes, yes. You, you, you're going to have $6 million hair salons. Who, are you following me? You know, you, you're going to have 50 churches. You're going to have 100 churches. God comes to us in that, in that realm. You got that? And then in verse 5, he says, Neither shall your name be called Abraham, but Abram, but the name should be called Abraham. So God changing his name ain't nothing changing the physical realm, but he changed his name. Yes. I mean, he, he got to get you guys to stop calling yourself broke. You got to stop calling yourself a one church. You got to stop calling yourself, I'm looking for another raise. Is that right? Uh, uh, and verse 5, neither shall you not anymore be called Abram, but thy name should be called Abraham. So what is your new name? Bro D. So what is your new name? He said, because you, you, got, you got to change your name. So, so God's getting him to conceive this. Is that right? He's calling him to conceive what God believes is possible for him. You got that? And, and, and then he says, this is verse 5, And thy name shall no longer be called Abraham, but, na- but thy name shall be called Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. So this is the point. God calls you to conceive it by causing you to see your future of what he said in the past in your present situation. I'm going to say it again. God causes you are you following me? To see your present based upon what he said in the past concerning you and what you've been looking for to happen in the future, but he had to get you to conceive it in your present. Because God told Jeremiah, before I formed you in your mother's belly, I knew you. And before you came forth, I sanctified you, and I ordained you're going to be a prophet to the nations. So what he's saying here is that I've already made, you came Already, you're already a made man. You're already a made woman before you came forth in this earth. So God looks at you and put, but this is what I have already done. But I got to get you to give birth to it in those areas. So we're going to see here what God does, how God does things. As we, as we notice here in, in Genesis chapter 15 and verse number 1, it says this, And the word of the Lord uh, came to Abram. Are y'all doing all right back here? Y'all going to make it? All right, and the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision, but do not be what? Afraid. Is that right? I, Abram, I am your shield and your very great reward. In other words, what I'm showing you, don't get in the fear as though it can't happen in your life. Verse 2, but Abraham said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since, since I remain what? Childless. Is that right? If this is verse 2, and, and, one of the, uh, and the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus. In other words, God, are you sure that you're talking to me concerning this? Are you following me? In verse 3 it says, and Abraham said, you have given me no children. In other words, there's nothing happening in my life right now that is confirming this dream in my life. Somebody say amen. amen. So he says, You've given no children, so the servant of my household will be my heir. Then in verse 4, he says here, Then the word of the Lord came to him, This man will not be your heir. But a son who is of your own flesh will be your heir. Wait a minute. Are you sure? I'm 99 years old. And notice and what he did now in verse 5. This is what I want you to see here. He, verse 5 says, And he took him, he took him, outside and said look up to the sky and count the stars God's getting him to go there in his imagination yes, yes, I think Apostle Hilly always said God calls him to visit his future on the canvas of his imagination because if he, he got to conceive it so God said go outside 
and start counting what? The stars. Because God said, I got to get you to conceive what I already believe about you. I said, God said, I got, I'm trying to get you to conceive what I already believe about you. And that's what the difficulty is in our mind. When God starts talking to you about what's possible for you, sometimes the problem is us conceiving what God already believes about us. Okay, verse number five says, he took him outside. So sometimes God got to take you outside of your normal uh, uh, situation. Is that right? And then he said, look up to the sky. In other words, stop looking down. Stop looking at your education. Stop looking at your background. Stop looking at all, you know, what you ain't been able to do in your, your past life. And then he said, start counting the stars. You know, y'all, you know I, don't, I don't see, it's been a long time I really looked at stars, but, you know, they, they, they're good if you can ever see them. They still, because God said, look at the stars. You're looking at your bank account. You're looking at your education. All that's good. But it's not going to get you to where I want to take you to. So go and start counting the stars. Are y'all all right back there? It's not changing, y'all. Y'all, y'all help me out here. Amen. All right. Amen. No, because this is important to me. Amen. I do a lot of study, so that's why I make sure y'all get this together. Amen. All right? Amen. So I need y'all to follow me or, or we'll just, you know, do something else different. All right, now. So he took, he took him outside and said, look up and count the stars if indeed you can count them. Yes. Can you count the stars? Because if you can count the stars, that's how you're going to conceive you got to go places you've never been. you got to do things you've never done. you got to hang around people that you never hung around. Because everybody, everybody that you know is counting their bank account. Are uh, you following me? So you so you got to go outside of your, your environment and start counting the stars. Is that right? He said, if indeed you can count them. Uh, then he said unto them, so shall your offspring be. So shall your offspring be. So you, once you conceive it, then that's how far your offspring is going to be. So what have you been counting? I'm counting at least 50 right now. What are you, are you counting a multi-million dollar? I mean, as you see, it's, it's based upon what you're counting. And see, and God put in my heart, he said, that's what we, we're in the process right now doing here in Phoenix. Because those that knew me before was my old children. God got new children. Your old business is one business. God got a new business for you. Your old car was all right, but God got a new car for you. And every child, got to be give, you got to give birth to every child. I'll say it again. Verse 5 says, he took him outside. So can I take y'all outside for a moment? Can I take y'all to the Rolls Royce dealership? Can I take you to the multi-million dollar home? You know, you know what I'm saying? I got to take you outside and let you count. Can I, can I take you where people are, you know, do have... You know, 100, 100 million churches. People, people tell me, Dr. Craig, fit the church like this. But, but see, because I've been in Africa, fit, fit the churches are very small. Because I've, I, I've been around pastors that got 200, 300, 500 churches. So what we're talking about is very small to some people. But for a person that's been here, just struggling with one church, to them, it's, it's, oh my God, fit the churches? No. I thank God that I don't count some more stars. So, so you, so you got you to stop letting people count your stars. Because in anything, you let people count your stars, it's going to always be lower than what you can count. Are uh, y'all following what I said today? So this is important. So now, and so once he was able to conceive that, in verse 6 now, look what happened. It said, Abraham believed God. So when we're having trouble believing God, for the big things, it because we've not conceived. But once you can conceive it, then you can believe it. But people are trying to believe it, then conceive it. And they're trying to believe it without God using something as a sample of what's possible for you. 
and you found it. See, I, I know when I got my first Rolls Royce, you know, people thought I was crazy. I would go by there every day, looking at Rolls Royces. Oh, oh, I'm bumping Rolls Royce, Rolls Royce. Now, did I, was, I measuring my, was I measuring my pocket? No. I was measuring the dream that God put in my heart that I can have a Rolls Royce. People didn't like it. That's that Rolls Royce preacher. Well, that's, you know, that's, you, that's you count your stars. Let me count mine. Don't let everybody, don't, don't let somebody else count your stars. Are you following me? I remember we, we got that, that, that building over down West Phoenix, so that, that shopping center. You know, I, I didn't count the stars, but my students count the stars. They, I was, I'm teaching them faith, and they went outside Dr. Craig. We claimed the whole shopping center. I'm thinking about why, God, I ain't count that. I'm counting just maybe getting them large in the space. Maybe getting a larger space, but they, they, they must, must, uh, we're claiming the whole property. And all of a sudden, the, the owner of the shopping center came to church on a Sunday morning. He had never been to church on a Sunday morning. And God touched his heart that morning and told me, you know, you know what, what, what can I do for you? And I said, that building, he said, he got the building. The next thing he came around, why don't you just buy the whole thing? They ain't got no money to buy the whole thing. And he, he said, but I'll, I'll, I'll pay for, I'll, 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 uh, I'll give it to you, no money down. And I'll carry the note. How, how did it happen? My students Amen. counted the stars. Amen. Amen. Uh, I was counting the money. I mean, I'm counting your man with this budget. But the students, can see, so sometimes God will send you other people, you know, to help you in your count. That sometimes I believe things about you that you don't believe about yourself, but, you, but, but, it's, but, but it's your dream, it's in your heart, but, you, but you're trying to conceive it mentally. But it's Abraham believed God. And so... From that point on, every time God talked to Abraham about his future, he talked to him in measures of stars and sand. So notice here in Genesis chapter 22, verse 16, what it says. Genesis 22, verse 16, it says this. And he said, by, this is God talking, by myself I have sworn, said the Lord, for because thou hast what, done this thing, when God had, had offered his son, Thou hast not withheld thy only son from me. Notice it said, verse 17, that in blessing I will bless you, and in multiplying I will multiply you, what? As the stars. He's keeping that vision before him. I'm going to multiply you as the, as the stars of heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore. Oh, he goes to a lot level. Then first time, which is the stars. He said, but now I'm, I'm, I'm going to bless you according to the sand of the sea. Have you, ever, have you ever noticed how much granules it is in the sand of the sea? And God said, Abraham... If you go and start counting now, I had you count the star before, but now I'm also having you to count the sand on the seashore. That every granule of that, sand, of that sea, that's how many kids you're going to have. And he's talking to him about this when he's, he's 99 years old, his body's dead, Sarah's 90, her body's dead, and he says, count your kids based upon the stars you see. Count your kids based upon the sands of the sea. So once again, God, so God always spoke to Abraham in numerical forms and in dreams and visions. Now, 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 now to me, that's powerful. But now, uh, 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 6,000 years, 5,000 years later, we still, we, we, each one of us is one of those granules. Because the Bible said, if we be Christ, then we Abraham see the air according to the promise. So Abraham was seeing all of us in his, in, in his dream. We, we, we are one of those stars. Because we're the seed of Abraham, and heirs according to the promise. So God was saying, the blessing to you and your seed. Are, are, are y'all getting that? See, Abraham didn't see, he, he didn't see Beverly and Alfred. He didn't see Jerry and Don. He, are, you, are you following me? You know, but he saw uh, in, in, in a figure that every star started saying, ah. <laughs> you, know, you know, he saw babies crying and saying, oh, I, I'm one, I'm one. He looked at the sand and the sand began to rise up and said, oh, we're one too. How big is your dream? How far can you count? Because if you can, if you can conceive it and then believe it, God will do it in your life. Hallelujah. So then we can see even Abraham transferred this dream over to his kids. Hallelujah. Because God said the promise will be to you and to your seed. So notice in Genesis chapter 26 now, verse number 1, what it says. It says, and there was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, together. Now look what's happening here. 
It's a feminine land. Does this dream thing work in a famine? But the way God did, when the famine hit, when the famine struck, God never talked to him about the famine. He talked to him about the dream he gave him. So now, in verse 2, it says, And the Lord appeared unto Abraham and uh, unto Isaac and said, Go not down to Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell you. This is what he says, it says Sir John, verse 3, Sir John in this land, and I will be with you in what? I'll bless you because the blessing is to Abraham and to his seed, and for unto thee and to thy seed I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto thy father Abraham. So God is sending the same thing to us, that he will perform the oath which he swore to Abraham, which we're heirs of Abraham, we're Abraham's seed. So I'm getting you to see how some of these churches now are growing to multi-million uh, 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 member churches. How businesses now, people are, I remember years ago, becoming a millionaire was, was, was everything. Now folks are millionaire, we're we working on bi being a billionaire now. Because, they see, because, because God's, the dreams are in there. Somebody say, are you following me? People are dreaming. Hallelujah. And people are having visions about what's possible based upon the faith of Abraham. You getting that today? And then notice what he says in verse number four. He's talking to, he's talking to Isaac now, the seed of Abraham. And I will make thy seed multiply as the stars of heaven. He's still talking about the stars of heaven. Even when he's talking to Abraham's seed, he's saying, your seed, Isaac, because of what I said to Abraham, is going to multiply as the stars of heaven. So can I just tell us today that we're the seed of Abraham and that we need to start looking at the stars and the sand of the sea because that's, that's the promise God has given to us? Amen. Hallelujah. Ha hallelujah. 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 Are you following what I'm saying today? Amen. You know, can I, just, can I just go there for a moment? God got enough... In them stars, God got enough for every one of us. That if you want to have the house you want, the car you want, the business you want, all you got to do is count the stars because they're, they're all your heir of all of that. I'm counting the stars. Hallelujah. Now, verse 4 says, I'll make your seed, this is us, to multiply the stars of heaven. And I will give unto your seed all these countries, and in your seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. Yes. Yes. If you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So when God looks at you and I, he don't count pennies. He's still counting the stars. He's still counting the sand on the seashore. Hallelujah. And so you got to change your name. Some of them going to like you changing your name. Because they want you to stay, your name to be broke. Your name to keep working for somebody else. But I changed my name as the head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. The lender and not the borrower. I changed my name to blessed in the city and blessed in the field. I changed my name to the blessing of the Lord, make a bridge and ask no sorrow to it. I changed my name to multi-millionaire. <laughs> no, what, what, I, I miss counting. What, 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 how far can you count? How far can you dream? Remember that song? To dream the impossible dream. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so notice what Isaac did. So Isaac knows the blessing is on me. And, and, and God's counting the blessing. So in, my, in, in, so in this poverty state, I know how to activate this blessing on my life. In verse, scroll down to verse number 12, it says this, Then Isaac sowed in that land because the blessing was on him. Isaac is not, he's not counting the, because at that time there was, at that time there was a, a, a famine in the land. What, we, what, we, what do we call famine nowadays? Uh, uh, it happened in 2008. It's a recession. But Abraham is not counting, Isaac is not going to count the recession. He's counting the, the, the promise of God to bless his seed according to the stars in the sky, according to the sin in the sea. So, so he says, I'm going to sow a seed 
in this recession. And I don't believe God for my, my money to multiply as the sand of the sea. So look what happened here in verse 12. It says, then Isaac sold in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. Oh, my God. The seed, he understood that God said that, that you know, that uh, until, until the, as long as the sun is up, as long as there's winter and winter, seed time and harvest will never cease. And the way I activate that seed to multiply the stars in the heaven is to trust God not for, because he said, God said there's the stars on the sea. So what I'm saying is that this is, the, this is one of the keys to getting it done in Jesus' name. When you give your tithes, you're not just paying your tithes. You're tapping into that, them stars. You're tapping into that sand blessing. So therefore, when he, when he made that, when he sowed that seed, it said he received it in the same year. Your year can turn around. And by the end of this year, if we can conceive this. <laughs> no, 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 I'm, 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 I'm going to stretch a little bit there. In, in this next year, every one of us in here, listen to me right now, the possibility, if we'll count the stars and not count the people, if we'll count the sand and not the people, but let the stars turn into people. God said this year, before this year is out, the hundredfold is yours. The hundredfold is yours. And, the, and, and it says here, verse 13, and the man waxed great, went forward, and grew until he became very great. In the year where it started off as a recession. In the year that started off being broke. And I, the message Bible says, the message Bible says this, Isaac planted crops in that land and took in what? A huge harvest that year. God blessed him and the man got richer and richer by the day until he became very wealthy. That seed got into them stars and into that sand. In that one year, the man went from recession to wealthy in one year. That's the possibility. But we got to feed on things at this level. So what God did, God took Abraham out of the natural realm and pulled him into visions and dreams. Because the dream that you have is bigger than your pocketbook. Now, can I give you the, I don't know if I put this on the, on the screen or not, y'all. I'm not sure if this one's on there. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 10. Did I put that on there? Okay. But y'all you, you, you need probably uh, uh, listen to this now. Deuteronomy chapter 1, 1, verse 10 and 11 says this. The Lord God, this is Moses' testimony. The Lord your God has multiplied you, and behold, you are this day as the stars of heaven. In other words, God, God performed that dream in their, in their lifetime. And then in verse, this is Deuteronomy verse 1 and verse 11 says this, and the Lord God of your fathers make you a thousand times so many more as you are. And bless you as he promised. So he said, look, that he said that in this year, you have become blessed like the stars in multitude. He said that, that your money has got to that point this year as the stars. But God said, I'm calling you to believe this. That's what the Bible said in, in Genesis chapter, I think, 13, verse 1 and 2. Abraham was very rich because he was getting rich according to the stars. He was getting rich according to the sand on the seashore. And then in Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 10 and 11, you probably want to meditate on that because God said, I'm getting ready to, to multiply you in your lifetime as the stars in heaven. That's how folks become billionaires today. Because for some reason, they started looking at themselves beyond a, a salary, beyond a, are you following those areas? Beyond just a normal, natural process. And they started believing that not only can they be millionaires, they can become billionaires. And God would give them billionaire ideas. Did you know, at one time, 
God was giving people million dollar ideas. Now God's giving people billion dollars, and some people now are working on trillion dollar ideas. Because it's still even a trillion and, and it's not a matching up to a stars yet. Are y'all following me? So, so that's why people now, I remember years ago it was a million dollars. Now it's a billion dollars. But there's people that they are multi-billionaires now. They're going for the trillionaires. Because, because that's, God says, Abraham, I'm going to bless you according to the stars. I'm going to bless you according to the sands on the seashore. So when you look at things like that, what is 50 churches? Right. Hallelujah. But what is your business increasing at that level? Is it possible for you? Hallelujah. How big is your dream? How, how far can you count? Because that's what's possible. When I first started thinking about this back in, in, well, you know, uh, back in 1993, when my wife and I came back, we had taken the time to be around some, be, be around some more stars. We went to Raymond Baba Training Center, and we, and we saw thousands of people. We was counting them stars. We went to Crenshaw Christian Center, and we saw 10,000 seat auditorium. We saw a multi-million dollar ministry. So it was, it was easy for us to come back, because me and Bill have been counting stars for three years. So we came back knowing that we were going to get to multi-million dollar status. But then sometimes you get around people that you know, you know, you know that's just, that's just a, that, that prosperity church. And people start holding back on that. But, but if you keep pressing, everybody say keep pressing. Because see, there's another, there's, another, there's another birth that God wants to do. But you got you to conceive it. Are you following me? By counting how big can you dream? How big can you dream? Not, being, listen, not how big is your dream, how big can you dream? And I'm saying today, God says it's big as far as your eyes can see. I'll give it to you. I'll give you restaurants. I'll give you new businesses. I'll give you all that. Hallelujah. So y'all need to meditate on that one, that Deuteronomy 1, 8, I should have put that in there. Deuteronomy 1, verse 10 and 11, he's, this is Moses testifying. He says, the Lord your God has multiplied you, past tense. He's manifested in, in your lifetime. He said that you are this day as the stars of heaven and mother too. He promised it to you. Now you look at your life now, he says, y'all are like that. But in verse 11, he goes on down there, verse 11. He said, may the God of your fathers make you a thousand times more than you are right now. Yeah. Oh, my God. He's, that, that, that's good, isn't it? Hallelujah. And bless you as he promised. So he said that uh, you, where you are right now, God, he said God will make you 1,000 times bigger than that. Hallelujah. 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 Can you imagine you know, being, a, 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 you, you're already a multimillionaire, but God said, I'm here to make you a thousand times bigger than that. Yes. I'm going to make you a trillionaire. I thought I'd just take y'all there for a moment. Now, so don't go back and count your bank account yet. Now, nothing wrong with good business sense. Nothing wrong with big, good business sense. But you need, to, you need to get there. You need, to, you, need to, you need to venture out. Like God told Abraham, come outside. And start counting the stars. That your eyes have not seen. That your ears have not heard. That's why I'm not moving. You know, I, I wish I had a full church in there right now, but I'm just pregnant. I got them in here right now. I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just a little pregnant right now. I, I'm not counting. I ain't counting in here right now. I'm, count, I'm counting right now. I'm looking at the stars right now. I'm looking at the potential right now. Hallelujah. So I, ain't, I ain't looking out here. Uh, I'm going out. God told Abraham, come outside and count those stars. And he said, as you're counting them, those stars are turning to people. And those people are turning to money. But you come outside, though. He said, then go down to the seashore. Don't just count your front yard. You got, you got, a, you got a, a quarter acre of land. Get, get a, don't count there. Go out, to the, go out to the ocean. And can you say, count the sand on the seashore? Because sometimes you just count the little, 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 little house you got and the little front yard you got. He said, but don't count that. Don't count acres. Count sand. He said, that's, why, that's the promise I've given you. So in these last days, 
God said, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters are gonna, just going to prophesy. Your young men are going to see visions. Your old men are going to dream dreams. Hallelujah. But you got to go outside. You got to go outside. Go outside your family. Go outside your, 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 your family. Your, your family that told you that we, we, none of us get there. You're going to be the first one to get there. But you got to go outside. So I declare the stars in Arizona belong to us. I declare the money, stars is turning into money. Stars is turning into people. Stars is turning into new business ideas, new connections. But I'm going outside of my, where I've been. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this anointing. Thank you for the, your presence. And I ask that, Father, we would, Lord, your, according to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17, verse 16 to 18, that you would grant each of us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. Call the eyes of our understanding to be enlightened, that we would know the hope of your calling, the riches of your glory, and the exceeding greatness of your power that is to us as believers. Cause uh, your power to work in us according to the power that you worked in Jesus Christ when you raised him from the dead and you set him at your own right hand in heavenly places far above principalities and powers and might and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come Father and I thank you as you put everything under Jesus' feet all things on this earth are now under our feet and Father I thank you that we're walking the revelation of the stars and the sand and not where we've been or where we want to go but we're walking in it right now as though it already is, calling those things to be not as though they were. So let the rich say, let the poor say I'm rich. Let the sick say I'm healed. And that we are abundantly supplied in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give God some praise for that. Hallelujah. Amen. Anybody receive that? Amen. And then shut the door. Behind you. <laughs> Shut that door behind you. Hallelujah. There's so much, some people want to come behind you, you know, and, and, uh, and, and, and keep talking to you about, 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 about the front yard. You tell them, no, I'm going to the sea, I'm going to the sand. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Well, I'm with, look, don't let them talk to you about what's going on. He said, no, I'm looking at the stars now. Because that's where I'm headed. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So to, let, let's begin at this time, because like I said, we'll be on time all the time. We're going to receive our tithes and our offerings at this time. Amen. And, uh, and, and remember, the tithe activates this on your life. God said, when you bring your tithe, I will open the windows of heaven. Oh, my, isn't that blessed? What is the windows of heaven? Them stars. Yes. Them stars. Yes. That's that. I'll, op I'll open them stars up, yes. and I'll pour you out the blessing that I promised Abraham. It's going to come on your life. So we're not just giving just to support the church, which that, thank God for that. But we're, but we're locking into that open heaven. We're locking into that open heaven. You that are online, you're on Facebook, YouTube, how are you watching this? You're locking into this open heaven. And so as the day as you give your time, you can do it uh, right there. On, on, you see the link there on Facebook. If you don't see it, I'll be having it on in, in a minute. But if not, I think it should be on there already. But uh, uh, you, you click that link and it'll be right there, or you can go to Zelle at I Am Ministries. You can you can give your tithe there, all your offerings, cash app, dollar sign, apostle I am, and God's gonna cause things to happen in your life right now. Activate. Amen. I declare everyone you activated in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I declare you activated in Jesus' name, and I declare you're gonna see. <laughs> glory to God. I don't know about y'all, but I got something out of this message. God, God, you know, I, I've, been, I've been working on this for the last couple of days. And God kept enlarging my mind. And then last night, God says, not how far, can, how, how, how big is your dream, but how far can you dream? How far can you count? Because God says, if you can believe that, I'll do it for you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And so, I'm, so as, as we're giving today, 
I'm going to, re I'm going to receive your tithe and receive your offering on behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm declaring his blessing, his favor on your life in abundance. If you need an envelope, they, they can also bring an envelope if you need one. But I'm declaring on your life in Jesus' name. See, let me say it again. Ain't, don't count what's, see, like right now, I ain't counting out here. I'm counting what's in here. You got to, everybody's, I got to give birth to it. See, so you, 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 you can't, thank God won't let you go on the last kid and say, well, I went through enough pain on the last one. No, this is a brand new one. Every child is different. Every child requires the same process. So what God's in your life right now is something new that you've never done before. That's why it's taking a little bit more time in Jesus' name. Y'all, y'all receiving that? So, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I receive on behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ the tithe and the offering from your people. And I declare supernatural favor, increase, and blessing as the stars of the sky, as the sand on the seashore, on their lives, on their businesses, and on their ministries. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Okay, at this time... Uh, whether if, you, if you're giving it here by envelope, you can go ahead and come up. If you're doing it on your phone or whatever there, you can just go ahead and uh, uh, receive it this time in Jesus' name. And then we're going to get ready in just one moment to receive communion. Amen. Praise God. Thank God for communion in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Can, can you... Uh, all right, that's, that's good. Thank you so much. We're going to get ready to receive communion. Can you imagine that if God get his people to really believe the word of seed of Abraham and they're going through that blessing... How many millionaires will pop up in our churches? Oh, yeah. it, 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 it's, it'll be normal, you know, for people. We, we can say, you know, today we need to get up. We need, we need to raise a million dollars this morning. We can do it in five minutes. Because people are at that level. Everybody said that's coming in Jesus' name. Because I believe God's already put that in the hearts. I believe God's already put a dream at that level in the minds of people. I remember when I was, we was coming up, there was people that said, you know, I'm believing God to be able to give a million dollars. That seems strange, but I, I know a lot of my friends right now that do it right now. Amen. And what I'm saying is you got to make sure that you don't, you don't, let, you don't start let other people count your money for you. Yeah, yeah. Don't, nobody, don't nobody else count your dream for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. All right, so everybody got communion? We're going to receive our communion based on this covenant. That we have a God. You can all stand with me. And you that are, are, are watching on Facebook or YouTube, how you watching, then you can also just get you some crackers, whatever you got right there, juice. And let's get this communion. Let's, let's, let's come in and give them what God's covenant promise. As big as the stars of the sky and the sand on the seashore. That God's covenant with us. And from this day forward, the dream is going to come alive in a brand new way. We consecrate this time right now, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say it. Amen. amen and amen. Let's take it together. Hallelujah. And then let's have the communion in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So, Father, we consecrate this moment, and we thank you, Father, that now, as we've taken communion, we've given our tithe and offerings, and now, Lord, uh, let, let this seed that's been sold today in covenant, be established in the lives of every person in the day, Father. Let it be established in their families. Let it be established in their personal lives, in their businesses, in their ministries, Father, in the health of their body. Lord, I decree your word declares, I am the Lord that healeth thee. That's a part of that covenant promise. So I thank you that every, any sickness, any disease, any pain, because of your covenant with us, Father, leaves right now by the authority of Jesus Christ cancer leaves diabetes leaves in jesus name in the name of jesus and father i thank you that financial lack leaves the people because we are heirs to the promise of abraham and lord we thank you for that right now in jesus and everybody say it amen and amen well god bless you all that ends the service for today for you that are on facebook you that are on youtube until next week at the same time may god's riches and his very best be yours have a blessed day. Bye-bye now.